what is uh, the MyCode framework? First of all, is an open source framework. Uh, is uh, licensed under uh, Apache 2. Uh, does uh, no strings attached. Um, it's uh, a modern JVM framework. Uh, by that, I mean it was. Uh, it is already used by many companies in production. We released the first uh, GA version, the first uh, MyCode 1.0 back in uh, autumn. Uh, 2018, uh, and we will be releasing MyCode 4 in 2023. So it's already, it's not new, uh, but it's modern enough that you will see that uh, uh, it's a framework to work uh, in 2023 um, with the things that uh, you will expect from a framework um, uh, from the 2020s uh, that I mean, like cloud first, uh, JSON approach. Um, Designed from scratch, basically. Uh, most of the people in the initial development team of the framework, we come from the Grails framework, uh, which is a framework that uh, uh, was built on top of a Spring Boot. So if you are coming from a Spring Boot, you will see that there is like a, a smooth uh, learning curve. There are many things great in Spring, and uh, Micronaut doesn't try to reinvent the wheel when um, those things uh, work. Uh, we like to say that MyCode is a foundation framework. Uh, by that, I mean that uh, you can build any application. And given that uh, today uh, I am talking to the Colin user group, uh, my bet is that many of you will probably have experience building uh, Android applications. And uh, you can use many parts of MyCode uh, in Android applications. In fact, you can use a MyCode's dependency injection engine. Um, Within a micro application, you will see that it's an approach similar to, to Dagger. Uh, for those of you who have used a dependency injection engine in the Android world, uh, and if you have built Android applications, you probably have used something like Retrofit. Uh, you will see that the micro HTTP client will remind you a lot to the Retrofit HTTP client uh, in the sense that this, uh, uh, you will basically write an interface and uh, it will be built at build time. Uh, so today I'm going to show you like how to write in the demo, I'm going to be writing like a backend application. But you can build any kind of application with micro. You can build a monolith. You can build a, a microservices. You can build a serverless functions. Uh, as Lee was saying before, you can build a um, command line interface application. So um, it is a modularized framework. And depending on the kind of application you want to build, you will use some parts uh, of others. Uh, highly optimized. Um, uh, Michael leverage uh, the standard Java annotation processor uh, uh, mechanisms to generate uh, extra bytecode at uh, build time. Uh, we will not modify your bytecode, uh, but we will generate uh, extra bytecode that will uh, uh, sit uh, aside your uh, the, the bytecode of your classes. Uh, and uh, we like to say that uh, we like to move as much logic as possible at build time. That's logic such as a dependency injection um, a logic, a validation logic. A micro data will generate a pre compute as much as it can at build time. Uh, in general, um, traditional JVM frameworks have done as much, uh, or all of its uh, uh, power has been uh, done at runtime, and micro is done at, at build time. That uh, what enables the framework to have a fast startup time, which hopefully I will be able to show it to you today, and also like uh, a slow memory consumption. Uh, that's uh, important because uh, startup time will be useful not just uh, uh, when you go to production, but also while you are developing locally. Uh, and you will see that when you work with micro applications, you will write many more tests uh, and you will write uh, many more functional tests because the application is so fast to uh, start that uh, you will not shy away from writing um, a functional test. Uh, the framework follows a semantic version. We released uh, a minor version more or less every six to 10 weeks. Uh, and we released like a Patch versions weekly, typically. Uh, patch versions with bug fixes, minor versions with features, and major versions with breaking changes. So, MyCod 4, for example, will uh, we will have a uh, Colding 1.8 and um, 
major, major version of a Kator, for example, which is another coding framework integration we have. Um, so yeah, uh, semantic version, we would like to say that we are quite strict about it. So uh, what that brings our users is that um, uh, the upgrade path is really easy. Uh, upgrading uh, from patch versions or minor versions is typically just um, changing if you are using Gradle your Gradle the properties files or in, in May in your pom.xml file. Um, uh, when you listen, hear about my code, you will hear like uh, about AOT ahead of time. And basically what we do is we build uh, as much as possible at build time, as I was saying. So dependency injection, configuration injection, annotation metadata, AOP. Uh, AOP is logic that you will see, for example, for validation or for um, transaction demarcations, uh, being introspections, we are able to basically serialize and deserialize on JSON without using any reflection. Uh, so in general, we avoid reflection like it is the plague. Uh, there is no like uh, dynamic class loading, no class path scanning, no proxy generation. So um, we moved as much as possible to build time. Um, in terms of uh, what the framework does, uh, uh, we have a dependency injection. We comply to the J JSR uh, 330. So you will use the standard Jakarta annotations uh, for uh, injecting or at Singleton, et cetera. Uh, you can define configuration as you are used to in other frameworks. Uh, you can define configuration with uh, properties files, with YAML, with TOML. And since this is the uh, calling user group, uh, you can use also Config for K, um, validation support is a reflection fee. Uh, we have we support a subset of the BIM validation specification. Uh, if you want the or if you want or if you need the full um, BIM validation specification, you can use Hibernate Validator, which is the reference implementation with MyCode as well. Uh, we support uh, AOP, um, uh, completely uh, compile time and reflection free. Uh, and it's actually quite uh, easy to build uh, AOP, your own custom AOP um, functionality. Uh, we have, uh, MyCode has a built-in HTTP client. So when you are working with MyCode, you don't need to have something like retrofit or Bolly or something like that, you will uh, ship with uh, our own HTTP client, which you can use either in a declarative or in a um, manual way. I will show you in the demo. Um, language agnostic, we support uh, Java, Kotlin, or Groovy. Um, uh, for Java, we use the standard uh, annotation processors. For Groovy, we use the AST transformations. Uh, for Kotlin in Micron 3, which is the version, uh, the latest version of Micron, in the one that I will be demoing to, uh, today, uh, we use uh, KAPT um, to basically uh, hand to the standard uh, Java notation process. KAPT is in maintenance mode, uh, and we are working on supporting uh, KSP. Um, uh, and I think we will have uh, KSP support in uh, Micron 4. Um, so if you are uh, planning to use Kotlin with Micron, you are in good hands. Uh, and we have like a vibrant community of Kotlin users. I think like I have not checked lately by the stats, but uh, around um, one third of the applications uh, that are generated in Micron Launch, uh, they use Kotlin as the programming language. Uh, and you will see in the, in the GitHub activity that we have many users uh, using Kotlin. Uh, which Java versions do we support right now? Uh, Micro 3 still supports uh, Java 8. So we support Java 8, Java 11, and Java 17. So the latest uh, LTS uh, releases of Java. Um, if you can, uh, my recommendation always use the latest version of uh, uh, Java available to you. Uh, I will be showing today, I will be selecting Java 17. Uh, build agnostic, you can build your. Um, my code applications with either a Gradle or Maven. Uh, I assume many of you, since you are like using Kotlin, you probably use Gradle. Uh, and I will be showing you Gradle today. Uh, we support both the Groovy uh, DSL or the Kotlin DSL. Um, we have uh, build plugins, both uh, Gradle, uh, Micro Gradle build plugins 
um, and maybe a build plugin as well. Uh, I will be using those. They're not required. Um, as I said, uh, my code is uh, built uh, on top of um, standards in, in Java. So uh, Java notation processors are not something that uh, my code invented. They are like a, a part of Java and uh, the build plugins that are basically will make your life a, li a little bit easier, uh, but they are not, if, if for whatever reason you don't want to use them, completely fine. Uh, test framework agnostic, you can use uh, whatever uh, testing frameworks uh, you prefer. Uh, we support the unit five, we support the Spock framework, uh, we support the uh, uh, code test as well. Uh, and I will show you today uh, the unit five uh, with Kotlin because uh, my code test is uh, not very good. Uh, but if you want to use uh, code test, we support that. Uh, we support uh, in Michael 3, I think we support. Code test five and code test four. Um, so if you want to use a Kotlin testing framework, that's that's completely fine and support it. Uh, and uh, let me show you a demo. Um, so uh, the home of my code is uh, mycode.io. Uh, so I'm going to go here to um, mycode.io. Um, and we have, like, uh, you see the launch button here. That's uh, our project um, generator, we have uh, also like a command line tool that you could use to generate a project. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, Java 17. I'm going to generate a micro application. As I told you, uh, you can generate many kinds of applications. So you could generate, like, pro, for example, a pure Kafka uh, consumer, a gRPC application, a Lambda function. So I'm going to go with Java 17. I'm going to say here, like, uh, Brighton uh, demo. Uh, com.example as the base package is fine. I'm going to select the latest stable version, so 381. Uh, I'm going to go with Kotlin as the language. I'm going to select uh, Gradle Kotlin DSL. I'm going to go with JUnit. I'm going to click Generate Project. This is going to uh, download a zip file to my computer. Uh, I'm going to um, unzip it. We have uh, great support in uh, IntelliJ IDEA, which is the IDE that I will be showing you today. Uh, but if you prefer to use something like Visual Studio Code, that has a great uh, plugin as well. So I'm going to drag and drop the project to uh, IntelliJ. Um, let me show you the project. So this is a Gradle build because I selected Gradle. So we have the standard uh, Gradle WU, the wrappers, and the standard Gradle files from a Gradle project, uh, Gradle wrapper properties and the Gradle wrapper.jar. We have a settings.gradle in case you want to have like a multi-project build. I just have uh, one module here. Uh, and then I have uh, the Kotlin KPT. So whenever you uh, add something, let me make the font bigger so that you are able to see it. Sorry. <clears throat> Hopefully, is the font uh, good enough? If not, please let me know. Um, I have here the window. I have another monitor with the chat open. So whenever you have something on the annotation processor class path, you will have to use the um, KPT Gradle configuration. Uh, let me just remove a couple of things that will not be used in the demo. Um, and let me show it to you. Um, I'm going to go. I, I have just one uh, main class, uh, nothing fancy. Uh, in my code, you can run in the application just by clicking uh, the play button here or just by uh, running the Gradle task uh, run. Uh, so let me just do that and show it to you. So we don't have any. Um, anything in the application. So the application started in uh, less than a second, uh, included some compilation there. Uh, I'm going to go here and I'm going to say Gradle. And uh, this is my recommendation when you go with that you delegate completely to Gradle. Um, so that's fine. Uh, so the first thing that I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to come here and um, create a controller. Uh, so let me create a controller. Uh, I'm going to call this uh, the greeting uh, controller. Uh, Kotlin class, nothing fancy. Uh, how you, you define routes in a micro application? Uh, well, you create controllers. Uh, in the controllers, you're going to define the endpoints. And uh, micro uh, 
Hit core is, is a, a, an annotation based programming model. So you are going to uh, add annotations to your classes. So I'm going to annotate this class with how do you create a controller? Well, we have an like, add controller annotation, as you can imagine. Um, uh, how do you create like a get endpoint? You have like a get annotation. Uh, and then I create a method and I say uh, index. And since Kotlin, uh, one of the nice uh, things of Kotlin that I like is that you can, everything is an expression that you can assign. I can do here like hello world. And uh, I can, uh, my code by default expects that you are working uh, with JSON. So unless you specify otherwise, uh, the content type is going to be JSON. So let me specify a content type of uh, plain text. So I'm going to say this uh, endpoint is going to produce a uh, plain text. Um, and I can just uh, run the application. Application will start. I'm going to open here a terminal and I'm going to uh, send a curl request. Uh, so I'm going to do curl uh, minus i so that we see the HTTP status response. And I'm going to do um, minus n so that we see the response. I'm going to do localhost um, 8080. And you see here the hello world, hopefully. You see here the hello world being responded by our applications. Let's do something. Let's create a, a how do you specify like a sub route? Let's do here hello. Um, I could be running this with RAM minus uh, E, which will recompile. Um, let me do here hello. And there you go. So that's. How it is, how easy is to write a controller? Let me write a test for this. And this is coming back to my point of you will write many more tests because tests are fast to run. So I'm going to create a, a greeting controller test. Um, via Kotlin cast, uh, I'm going to create a method. This is JUnit. So it's going to be a test. It's going to be a method annotated with a test. It'll be fun because uh, that's how fun. Uh, calling methods are. I'm going to say um, test hello. I'm going to say um, I'm going to show you uh, how to like uh, run uh, the real application within a test. Uh, and then I'm going to show you an annotation that we have to make this simpler. So let me create a variable called uh, server and I'm going to call application uh, context uh, run. Embedded uh, server, uh, I have to do class.java. And uh, that's running the server. And because I am a good citizen, I'm going to close the server at the end of my test. Uh, I can, I can um, when we created the application, we already have the MyCode HTTP client dependency. So I can use the MyCode HTTP client. So I'm going to create an HTTP client bin. Uh, I'm going to go here. I'm going to go application context create bin of type HTTP client class.java. And I'm going to point the HTTP client to the server URL. And I'm going to assign this to an HTTP client variable, HTTP client. And I'm going to create a blocking HTTP client because by default, uh, the MyCode HTTP client um, is going to re return like a reactive string types. So it's going to return publishers. But in my test, I don't care about publishers um, because I want to see the results now. So I want to block. So I'm going to get a blocking HTTP client. Uh, and I'm going to do a request. Uh, and let me, show, let me create a request variable to show it to you. So we have like a fluid API. Uh, so I'm going to create a request. Uh, um, we have like verbs uh, for the. Um, let's see. This is me. Uh, HTTP request stream. There you go. Uh, so I have a request. Uh, the request is like, as you see, is, there is like a fluid API uh, sending a GET request against the uh, hello endpoint. Uh, and now I can do like um, client. Typically, when you work with an HTTP client market, you work either with exchange or uh, with a retrieve. Uh, you work with exchange when you want to uh, evaluate the whole uh, HTTP response envelope. If you want, for example, to do an assertion in the status of the HTTP response, 
you go with the trip when you only care about the body. Uh, let me just care about the body for now. Um, so I'm going to go uh, here, request, and I'm going to assign this to a variable called response. And uh, then I could do here an assert equals from the unit. Um, and I could do this. I expect this to be hello world um, response. And if I am able to resolve uh, the import assert equals, there you go like an extra S. So I should be able to run the test. So the test is going to run a real server uh, and uh, hopefully it's green. And this is going to allow me like to eat evolving application. So the test is green. Uh, perfect. Uh, let me uh, show you failing. So if I do hello moon, the test should fail. And it fails. Uh, let me show you something, which is uh, we are like actually doing HTTP request. This is not a trick, not no, no trick here. Um, so my code uh, uses SLA4J as a login for chat, but uh, by default we use logback. Uh, so we have like a a logback.xml for configuring the logger in your application. So a standard Java login, uh, and I'm gonna do here. Um, I'm going to configure the micro HTTP client to log in the trace level, and we are going to see the HTTP request hitting the server and the response coming back. Uh, so I'm going to go here and make it this big, and you will see here the HTTP request being sent to the server and the response being coming back. So this is starting a real server and sending a, a response. Um, So this is uh, a bit uh, tedious to like start a server and then uh, close it. So uh, MyCode has uh, an annotation, a MyCode test, uh, which uh, is applied automatically in your test class path uh, by the MyCode uh, graded build plugin. It has an annotation that you can use to uh, simplify uh, some of this ceremony. Uh, so I'm going to use here uh, at MyCode test. Um, now I can uh, inject also the HTTP client. I can inject the HTTP client uh, like this. So you uh, add a late init bar. Basically, you are telling uh, Kotlin like uh, uh, you are not initializing this variable right now, but uh, you are on top of this, and this is going to be initialized later. But, the way it works is my code will uh, start an embed server and it will res will basically uh, resolve these injection points once the application context the dependency injection engine has started. So hence the uh, late init. And this is an annotation that uh, you can tell essentially uh, when you generate uh, the bytecode, where do you want this uh, uh, annotation to be applied to? By using the add client, add client is a my code annotation. Uh, you are basically pointing an HTTP client to the root of the embedded server. So now I can get rid of this. Um, I can get rid of this. So the test is a bit more uh, succinct uh, and nice. Um, so let me run the test again to you. Hopefully, it will be uh, still green. Um, so this is what we typically refer to as a manual HTTP client. Uh, when you are working with a manual HTTP client, you work either with retrieve or exchange. Um, we could have a written, for example, here, a, but an exchange and get the HTTP response and check that this is a 200 OK. Uh, but a nice thing that my code has is it has built in a, a, a declarative HTTP client. And the declarative HTTP client will be generated at build time. Uh, so I'm going to come here and do here um, I'm going to say greeting client. Uh, I am adding it in my test class path. Uh, and I'm going to say here, this is an, uh, sorry, not a Java class, um, but a Kotlin. I'm going to create a Kotlin interface, actually. Um, I'm going to call this greeting client. And I'm going to take this with that client. Uh, and I'm going to take it with uh, point it to the root of my application. I'm going to go here and inject it. Uh, let me inject it. Uh, I can do uh, inject a late init bar, um, greeting client, greeting client. 
the test should still be green and this injection endpoint should have been fulfilled. I'm going to create a, how do you create a methods that send requests uh, from an HTTP client, from a client, HTTP client, really easy. Same way, same way we did with, uh, um, with the client, uh, with the server, sorry, but vice versa. So uh, I'm going to come here and I'm going to say, this is going to be a, still like a, a going to be a method that takes a string as the return type. And instead of produce, it's going to consume a uh, plain text. Um, so now I can come to my test and I can, um, you see, it's an interface annotated with that client. You have uh, the different routes that this HTTP client is uh, consuming. They are annotated with HTTP verbs. So I'm showing you the get, uh, but as you can imagine, we have a head, we have a delete, we have a post, we have a patch and options. So we have like an annotation pair. A HTTP verb. Uh, we have here like a path. Uh, you can combine uh, the value in the client and the in the method and or in the controller in the method uh, and the return type. So here we are like returning a blocking type, uh, but you could return like a publisher as well if you were like writing this in your main class path and you didn't want to block. So in my test, uh, I'm gonna do now here the same thing, uh, but instead of uh, Using this, I'm going to use the declarative client. So I'm going to use um, meeting client.index. Uh, I call this index, but I could have, let, let's rename this to something else like, uh, like hello. Um, so you don't have to have the method name the same as you name it in the controller. You can name it whatever you want. The method name doesn't matter. So it works. Let me uh, show you that there are actually two requests now being sent. This is the request being sent by the manual HTTP client. And this is the request being sent by the uh, declarative uh, HTTP client. Uh, so the declarative HTTP client, you have what we retrofit. They will remind you to that. Uh, uh, we have uh, one implementation right now in Microsoft 3, which is built on uh, with Netty. Um, we are working in one implementation with Micronaut uh, 4, which will use the built-in uh, JavaNet HTTP client. So you will be able to use either of. Um, if the built-in Java client suffices you, uh, you will be able to, to use that as well. And you will not have to change the code. The, the, the interface will be the same. Um, I was telling you that MyCode as its core is a dependency injection engine. Uh, so let me show you what I mean. Is uh, we support dependency injection. So I'm going to create an interface. I'm going to say like a greeting um, service, for example. Um, let me create a Pollo. Uh, in Kotlin, we have one great thing, which is data classes. So I'm going to create a data class. And I'm going to say this is greeting. Um, in data classes, uh, we by default uh, we have to specify at least one. So I'm going to specify like message, uh, and this is going to be of type of string. Um, the greeting service is going to be an interface that responds um, a greeting. So it's going to be a fun um, greeting, for example, uh, greeting. And I'm going to inject it in the controller. Uh, how do you inject in the controller? We support several injections. Uh, so you can inject as a field, as I saw you in the in the test with the at inject uh, annotation. Uh, you can inject, uh, you will support a method based injection. But our preferred way, uh, um, one way that really signs in Kotlin is a constructor injection. So I'm going to inject uh, via constructor injection. So I'm going to go here. And do a bald a greeting service, a greeting service, and that will be enough. And now I can change this to greeting service a, a greeting, and this method is no longer returning like a, a like a plain text, but it's going to return this a data class that is going to be serialized as JSON. So I'm going to remove the producers. I don't have to specify producers application JSON. That's uh, what Micro thinks that you are doing by default. That's, this is part of what I was telling you before that Micro is a modern framework. So uh, by default, uh, Micro expects that you are uh, receiving a JSON in the body of your uh, post request that your application is getting, but also that you are producing JSON. Um, 
so I'm going to be returning greeting uh, and I don't have an implementation, so the, uh, the, the project is going to fail. <coughs> Let me change the test. Uh, so instead of hello world, I'm going to create a variable called expected uh, and uh, expected is going to be of type string. In calling, you can use this thing. Instead of escaping the double quotes, we can use uh, triple quotes and do you hear like a um, message, um, hello world. So this is my JSON, my JSON object. Um, and I could now replace this with expected. Uh, the test is going to fail because my code is going to tell me, Sergio, I, I don't know how to fulfill this injection point that you told me that I have to do in the greeting controller constructor. So let me run the test and show it to you the failure. And we will solve the failure in a second. One well, of the nice things of Microt is uh, because we don't have uh, all of that extra runtime uh, proxies and the errors are quite easy to understand. Uh, so it tells no bin of type greeting server exists. Make sure the bin is not disabled by bin requirements. We have like a nice uh, add requires annotations uh, that I'm not going to demo today, but check it out. Uh, it's telling you like, Basically, it's not able to fulfill the injection endpoint. So how do we, do we create a, a, a singleton in Micronaut? Well, uh, we use the standard uh, Jakarta notation called at singleton. And we do that. So I'm going to create like a greeting uh, service implementation. It's going to be like a class. Uh, let's do implement the interface in Kotlin. Um, by implementing the interface, I'm going to have to uh, override uh, the greeting method. And I'm going to do greeting and call it no need for a new keyword. So I'm going to do hello world. And I have to annotate the class with at singleton so that Micronaut uh, basically uh, knows that this is a singleton of the bin of type greeting service. Uh, so now the injection endpoint uh, will be fulfilled. And uh, hopefully my test will still be green. It's not, and it is because I think I forgot to change the client. Um, so let me change the client. Uh, so the first one passed, but the client I forgot to change. So now the client is no longer receiving a string, uh, but uh, it's going to be receiving an object. Yeah. Let me run it again. Still no luck. Uh, OK. Uh, it's telling me uh, that the test uh, expectation uh, doesn't matter. And actually, the ID was uh, already hinting that to me, but I didn't listen to the ID. I should listen to the ID more. So it's telling me that this thing is an object and this thing is a string. Uh, so what I could do is uh, create here something like message. Um, And you use another nice feature of calling, which is string interpolation. And now here, I do switch. And now the ID like it more. I am comparing apples to apples. Um, so let me run the test again, and the test should be green now. So the test is green. Uh, what the did we uh, just do? Uh, I created an interface, uh, nothing uh, fancy, a standard interface in Kotlin. I created a class which overrides, implements the interface. And I annotated the class with a singleton. And because of that, I have now a bin of type greeting service. So I have a bin of type uh, greeting service that I can inject uh, in other MyCod components. And I, how I'm injecting it, I am using constructor injection. Uh, and as you see, I'm, I am never instantiating the greeting controller class. My code will instantiate the greeting controller class and will provide uh, the collaborators for me. Um, what uh, did I show you also? Uh, uh, by default, uh, my code will use uh, uh, Jackson. We have also a reflection free. Uh, you can use Jackson reflection free as well uh, by annotating this class with that introspective. And we will generate at a uh, build time uh, bin introspection information so that we are able, like, uh, given like a JSON payload, instantiate this class with a using reflection 
and uh, fill it with the JSON. We also have an even more interesting project called Microsocialization, which is a, a drop-in replacement for a Jackson Data Bind. Uh, you have to annotate your classes with Observable, and basically that means that uh, you can still use the Jackson uh, annotations that you are uh, used to, like JSON property, et cetera. Uh, but under the hood, uh, you have like a, a, you are using microcellization, uh, and that's kind of a, a bit more secure because uh, you have to whitelist which classes can be serialized and deserialized. Uh, and it's also like completely um, reflection free and uh, a little bit more optimized. Um, so we have a dependency injection. Uh, Dependency injection, construction injection, also field injection that we are doing in the test, uh, and also method injection. Um, we support configuration injection, which is something that you probably expect from a modern framework. Uh, and we can have, like, for example, even immutable configuration injection. So let me show that to you. Uh, so I'm going to create an interface. Uh, I'm going to annotate it with a um, greeting configuration. And uh, I'm going to have a method called um, get prefix. I'm going to return a string. And I could just have immutable configuration by annotating this class with configuration properties. If you have worked with uh, Spring Boot, you know that there is a configuration properties uh, annotation for this kind of thing. We have the same uh, annotation. Um, as I told you, when the learning the learning curve to learn micro if you are coming from a spring or spring boot uh, background is really really smooth uh, so i'm gonna add here up and uh, i'm gonna do uh, here i can go to application.yaml so i went with the default configuration uh, format which is yaml and now i can do here up a uh, prefix uh, and i could do here hello or let me write something else like uh, hola and let's see the test fail uh, the app here is not a coincidence that matches the value of uh, add configuration property uh, annotation and the prefix is not a coincidence that uh, uh, matches as well. Uh, so now I can inject uh, this immutable configuration object in my um, greeting service implementation. So how can I inject it? Constructor injection again. Uh, I could do here val. Um, uh, Greeting configuration, greeting configuration, and now I could do here a greeting configuration and get prefix. Um, let me just uh, run the test and hopefully it will fail. And it's telling me that I, I was expecting hello world and it's returning hola world. So it is actually getting the value from configuration. So that's great. Uh, let me change this to hello. And uh, let me run it again. So configuration injection. So let's recap what we have done. How do you create routes with micro with controllers? Uh, you annotate methods with uh, add get, add post, add path, add put. We have a built-in HTTP client. We support the configuration injection. Uh, completely uh, generated at build time. So it's kind of similar to Dagger for those of you. Uh, Android developers, uh, we support uh, configuration injection as you uh, are used to. Um, I'm going to show you validation as well. Um, so imagine we were passing here uh, to this method like um, a parameter called a name of type of string. I could say I could use a standard uh, uh, annotations to provide validation. So I can say this name has to be a pattern. Uh, let me see if uh, the ID allows me to import. So this is standard JavaX validation pattern. And this takes like a regular expression. Uh, so I could do like a regular expression. I could say this can be Sergio or uh, John. Uh, and let me add this annotation also to the method that I am overriding here as well uh, with the name string. And I can uh, do here like um, now I could take here the name here, right? Uh, instead of all, let's do here like uh,
Uh, let's modify the controller to supply a value. Uh, so you see the, the controller is now complaining. I can use path variables uh, as well. So I can do here like something like name. Uh, and here has something like um, name string as a name. Now we have to change my test. Uh, I could do uh, here something like um, hello. Yeah, I could do here val Yuri Yuri Builder of hello. Path Sergio, or did I use? We put it in uppercase, otherwise the validation will fail. Um, and in the let me extract a name here. And now I can pass here the name as well. Let's modify the HTTP client so that it takes also like a parameter. Uh, and I could do here the same way as we did in the controller. I could do here like name. I sometimes like to put here path variable. It's kind of syntactic so at this point because I'm not changing anything, but I like to convey what the parameter is. Uh, so I could do here name string. And uh, hopefully the test will be green now. It's not. Uh, correct. Uh, so this is something that I wanted to show you. Um, so Kotlin uh, is a bit of a pain for <laughs> framework developers uh, because uh, for framework developers often, so Kotlin classes are final by default. Uh, and for the cell homes uh, in the room, you saw that I, uh, by default, we apply the all open plugin but sometimes you have to specify it directly. Um, so the way we do is, is we generate extra bytecode, which is uh, classes that extend your classes and call you uh, to be able to provide AOP at build time. So what uh, the framework is doing, it's seeing that uh, it, you have a method with an, a constraint annotation. We have to generate a class that validates this thing uh, basically and calls your method. So we have to be able to call this class. So you're gonna have to open this class on working with Micronaut and Kotlin, one of the things that you're gonna see is that you have to relax a little bit the uh, everything final by default in Kotlin. Um, so now uh, the test uh, is passing, but the, um, uh, the expectation is uh, be hello world, but hello name. Uh, and let's run the test again. So we support validation. Uh, you can use all of the standard uh, uh, validation constraints. Uh, so at a not blank. Uh, uh, well, in coding, you only have to use not null because uh, null ability is more controlled in coding. But you can use not blank uh, at register. You can create your own, for example. Uh, we did like a, in a client project, we had like a form that took like phone numbers and we created a validation that validated that the phone numbers were like in the uh, phone number specification format, which uh, I am right now not remembering, but essentially like the country codes and the digits were um, compliant to uh, the requirements. Uh, so you can create your own uh, custom annotations and wire them up to the standard uh, validation uh, uh, interpinings. Um, so that's kind of a uh, micro core in a nutshell. Uh, so dependency injection, configuration injection, uh, HTTP client, uh, validation all uh, at build time. Um, in my slides, uh, I uh, wanted to show you something. Um, I wanted to talk to you about, um, so what is GradVM? GradVM is a, a, a match made in heaven for a micro. Is, um, GradVM is a polyglot. Uh, 
eh, al periódico Virtual Machine from, eh, from Oracle. Eh, the interesting thing is eh, for us Java developers, is like um, they have a component called native image and they allow you to generate a native image, a native executable of your application. So it will be like a native executable uh, build for your platform uh, that you are like generating the file. And native executables, they are amazing because they start extremely fast and they consume really low memory. So uh, Galvian native executables uh, will uh, allow your uh, micro applications to go uh, to places where basically Java applications could not go, such as uh, often serverless. Uh, or uh, containers where you have really important like uh, low memory consumptions uh, um, constraints. Uh, so our build plugins, they have like uh, uh, tools, both uh, Gradle and Maven to generate a native executable. So let me show that to you. Um, so if I go here to downloads uh, and to our app, uh, I should be able to do um, Sorry, I should do SDK list uh, Java. So I should be able to install 22.3. So we support the latest. And so I want to show you like SDK install Java. I had it installed. Um, so I'm going to install a. So Graal you can use in JIT mode as well. So it's like a, a they support like a JDK. Um, uh, released and inside this there is like a, the native image uh, component and our build plugin will basically uh, streamline native image generation for you uh, really simple before i do that uh, let me show you something um which i didn't show you let me run the app uh, because we uh, said that uh, i told you of the constraint but i never saw you the constraint failing so let me run the app i forgot uh, i'm gonna run the app it's gonna start in localhost 8080 uh, I'm going to do here a uh, call uh, log minus i minus b. Um, localhost 8080. Hello, Sergio, right? And I'm going to return like a localhost. Localhost. Sorry, a typo. You see here 200 OK. Hello, Sergio. And uh, we said we added this add pattern annotation here, and we were expecting like uh, to fail uh, if the name is not Sergio or John. I didn't show you, but let me show you that. Uh, so if I enter here like hello world, I return like a bad request. Uh, this uh, JSON that you see right here is in the BND error format. Uh, you can plug uh, other formats such as a uh, problem JSON by adding uh, an annotation. Uh, in your application. Uh, so let me show that to you in a second. So I am here opening in my other monitor. Uh, MyCode is a modularized framework. I am just touching the surface of what's possible with MyCode in this talk. Uh, you have like many, many modules for different things. Uh, uh, one of the modules that I'm going is problem JSON. Uh, I am basically getting the dependency so that I don't. Um, do a mistake. Uh, so you saw here the, the error format is a bit ugly for me, uh, but this is a BM. The error is the name of this format. I'm going to uh, add here problem JSON and automatically the errors of my applications, they are going to use a problem spec, which for me is the it's my cup of tea is the one I like. Um, so I'm going to run it and when the app starts, Loading the dependency and starting. And there you go. Uh, now it's a content type application problem in JSON and problem in JSON format. Uh, if your organization has the requirement that your errors must be specified in a, a your own format, completely fine. It's really easy to. Um, customize that with the error processor API that we have in place. Uh, so check it out if uh, that's those are your requirements. Uh, I'm gonna um, 
I install, let me just run, let me just do the, um, use the RBM JDK that I just installed. Let me try to generate the native. I don't know if I have to install native compile. Should be the command. This should generate a native image. Uh, Try something. I don't know if I have to install this uh, just in case we need it. Um, I don't know why, but uh, GradVM doesn't come uh, with native image component um, by default installed. Uh, so generating with the, our Gradle plugin is just as if you are running native compile. Uh, Micro, as I told you, doesn't use any reflection internally. Um, so if you are like just using Micro things as we are using, Gradient native image generation is going to be extremely, extremely easy. As you will see, it's only a little bit slow. Uh, if you are using some transitive dependencies, uh, which all of us use, uh, we have like, um, so my GradVM uh, is not that it doesn't work with reflection. That works with reflection, but you have to whitelist your reflection usages. Uh, we have uh, don't work to basically provide that reflection configuration that GradVM needs for um, third-party uh, dependencies that the framework integrates with, uh, but if uh, for whatever reason we cannot provide you, you can also like provide your own reflection config. We have annotations that will allow you to do that in an easy way. So let's see if the native image generation uh, finishes. If not, I will jump to something else. Generating a native image and doing a an online talk is sometimes uh, a risky uh, business, uh, but hopefully uh, we can manage. Um, you can uh, distribute your micro applications as FATJAR, as Docker Image, as Gradient Native Executables, as Gradient Native Executables uh, within a Docker uh, Image, uh, a FATJAR within a Docker Image. So we have great integration for Docker as well. Um, and fat jar, if you want to generate a fat jar, absolutely, uh, we support that. You just run a Gradle Shadow a jar, and that will generate a fat jar of your application. Let's see if native executable uh, generation finishes. Um, now I'm able to run it. If uh, there are any questions while we wait, please. Okay, the native image finished. It tells me the native image is written to native compile. Uh, it's gonna have Brighton demo because that's the name of my project. Uh, let me do it like ls minus la Brighton calling. You will see that this is like a we do like um we have to do the you human. It's like a 69 mex. Uh, Tailored to Mac OS, uh, I am running a Mac OS. This is an uh, x86 uh, iMac Pro, so it should run this thing. Um, whoa. Uh, let me see if I have their server running also. That's why I didn't manage to start. But you saw that it started blazingly fast. It starts at uh, uh, 37 milliseconds which is quite impressive. And uh, this is uh, the real uh, deal. So I can uh, run a card request against this. Um, if I do like car localhost 8080, you see the response uh, came extremely fast. Um, so um, if I stop the native image, you see that the request was being sent against the native image. So native image, extremely fast. Uh, extremely low memory consumption, extremely easy to be built uh, with a uh, micronaut. 
And uh, the last part that I have for you today is uh, I wanted to, uh, so this was really like a my code one on one demo. Uh, so we have integration with uh, reactive libraries uh, in the vein that I told you before. We are reactive library agnostic. You can use RxJava 2, RxJava 3, Project Reactor. Internally, we use Project Reactor in micro, uh, micro 3. Um, so if you are um, if you want to use a reactive library, my recommendation is to use Project Reactor with Micronaut. Uh, if you want to just stick with uh, blocking, uh, you don't have to use uh, reactive libraries at all with uh, when you work with Micronaut. Um, so that's completely fine. Uh, don't be intimidated. If you want to write uh, reactive applications, you can do that with Micronaut. If you don't want to write reactive applications, that's completely OK, and I understand that as well. Um, serverless, we support. Um, you can build micro applications to deploy them to Lambda, to Google Cloud Run, uh, to Azure Functions. We are cloud agnostic. We have integration with the four uh, major clouds, with AWS, with Google Cloud, with Azure, uh, with Oracle Cloud. For example, we deploy recently micro 3.8, uh, micro data for uh, Cosmos DB, which is uh, the non-SQL database in the Azure uh, world. So whatever the cloud is, uh, we should be there for you. Uh, Runtimes, uh, I have uh, shown you today the default runtime uh, for MyCod, which is Netty, uh, but we support uh, server runtimes such as Jetty, Tonkar, or Undertow. Or if you are working with uh, Lambda, we, you are not even running like uh, uh, any of these servers. You are like running uh, inside a Lambda uh, function. Uh, so we support runtimes, uh, different runtimes. The default one is Netty. Uh, messaging, we support uh, NQTT. We have a MyCode NQTT module. We have a MyCode Kafka module. We have a MyCode RabbitNQ uh, module. We have a MyCode NATS. Uh, so if you want to build an application and use messaging, uh, we have a really nice programming module for you. Uh, we support database migration tools. Uh, we encourage people to use a database migration tools. And we have support for the two major open source uh, database migration tools, such as Flyware or Liquibase. Um, you can use um, either of these great uh, database migration tools. Uh, for persistent, we have a really interesting story in persistent. We have microdata, uh, which I didn't show you today, but microdata is kind of our um, similar to GORM data services or to Spring uh, data, but everything done at build time. We have different flavors for microdata. We have microdata for JDBC. We have microdata JPA if you want to work with Hibernate. We have micro data for MongoDB. We have micro data for uh, R2DBC. We have micro data for Cosmos DB. So this is the repository pattern. You create an interface. You annotate the interface with a repository, and we implement at build time the SQL queries for you. Um, really, really powerful, really nice uh, to work with. Uh, we have also uh, integration with Redis. We have also integration with uh, Neo4j and with Juke as well. Uh, so if you want to use Juke uh, and MyCode, that's fine. We support that. Uh, MyCode views. Um, even the framework is named Micronode. You can build monoliths, and you can build MyCode applications which render on the server side HTML. In fact, that's kind of my cup of tea. Uh, we uh, have support for many template rendering engines. So we support Thymeleaf, JT, Handlebars, the Rocker, Pebble, Soy. And we have even integration with uh, Turbo, uh, uh, which is uh, one of the technologies in the hot wire uh, umbrella. And we have like using Turbo in a micro application, we have some extra notation that will make your life a little bit easier. In terms of security, we have a great module called micro security. We support almost everything that you can imagine. So we support uh, session-based authentication, uh, basic authentication, uh, token-based authentication. We have support for uh, JWT. We have support for LDAP servers. You can have multiple LDAP servers. We have the uh, OAuth 2 integration. We have uh, OpenID Connect integration. So you can have, for example, your users in your Micronet application using signing with Google uh, or signing with Okta or with Kicklock or Cognito. Um, really uh, powerful and uh, hopefully easy to work with a uh, security solution. I saw that we support a uh, multiple error handle uh, formats such as BND error problem JSON. Uh, if you want to go the uh, multi, um, 
the microservices route, we have like a great integration with tracing technologies such as Zipkin, Jagger. We have support for open telemetry as well. Uh, service discovery with support console, uh, Eureka, uh, and many, many, many more modules. So we have uh, integration with Kubernetes. We have integration with gRPC. I have a module for Microt Cache uh, with all the implementations that you can imagine for Microt Cache, Hazelcast, uh, uh, Redis, Microstream. Uh, we have uh, Microt RS. We have a great uh, email module. So if you want to use the things such as MailJet, um, um, Amazon simple email service, we, we, you can use that with a nice abstraction. Um, we have a, you can build a CLI application with my, uh, Pico Cli. Uh, we have a support for things such as micrometer. So the framework is much more than what I have shown you today, but hopefully um, you got the appetite uh, for learning more. Um, my recommendation is if you want to learn more about the micro framework, just Important bit is that you remember the homepage of the framework is micro.io. Uh, and in micro.io, I'm really proud of this thing uh, that we call uh, micro guides. This is step by step tutorials. We have more than 100. Uh, since this is a Kotlin user group, we have, uh, I, I think I, we are one of the only frameworks that uh, we have almost all of our tutorials written in Kotlin. So if you want to use Gradle and Kotlin, you go to the matrix and there you go, and you will see all the uh, sample uh, codes uh, written in Kotlin. And we have um, these, all these code snippets, they are coming from real applications. So uh, you will see that there are always like tests in the sample applications, and you can download like a complete solution that will be built. And we have infrastructure in place so that we are able to up update these samples to the latest version. So this is all of these applications, they are running the latest. Uh, uh, samples, um, uh, all the all of these projects are built with the latest micro versions. Um, so I don't know. Uh, for example, I was showing you like dependency injection, but if you want to use um, a field injection, you have here a guide that shows you how to use field injection. So check micro guides. Uh, they are like thirty minutes commitments to do one of these tutorials. And they will help you like uh, getting started with the framework and then go to the modules, check what is in place for you. Uh, we have a lot of uh, user documentation. I think the micro documentation is good. We have like the main documentation for the core of the module, but then we have like configuration reference. All the configuration that you can uh, use is here. This configuration comes from code as well. So, um, there are no typos. The real configuration that is used is generating the documentation. So check it out. Uh, if you like uh, what you see, engage with our Gitter community. Gitter is kind of our Slack uh, or Discourse. Uh, and yeah, reach us in, in, in social media. Um, in Twitter, we are MyCodeFW. Um, myself, I am Esdelamo. And yeah, that's. That's everything I had for you today.